Call a textual critic. A textual critic is someone who spends their life studying the text of the New Testament and trying to determine uh, what Jesus actually said and what actually the original text said because we don't have the originals. Uh, I mean, think about that. I mean, that was frightening to me when I first started this investigation. It was like, you telling me you don't have the New Testament? Well, of course not. It, it was written on papyrus. It's long since gone, did reduced to dust. So it, was, it was scribes who were copying by hand these documents over a period of, of many centuries. And of course, errors are going to creep in. Um, and, and sometimes they intentionally made a few changes, too. We can talk about that. But he tries to make it sound like, therefore, we can't trust what's in the Bible. Asked us, you know, how do we know that the Bible has been corrupted? There's so many 2,500 manuscripts, or uh, actually 5,300 of the New Testament. Dr. Shuras, can I borrow you a copy of the Bible here? Do, do you mind if I just... You have your own. Can I just have a look at yours? No, you have one. I just need yours. <laughs> Thank you very much. You have the authentic <laughs> Bible, Dr. Shiroz. <laughs> now, the Hebrew and Greek... This is the New King James Version of the Bible. It contains 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. You're aware of that. You bring that story again. You're aware of that. And you're aware that you have already said in the previous debate that that is a later insertion into the Bible. Why are you carrying a Bible that has a verse that is a forgery? One verse out of tens of thousands. But you admit at least one verse that is a forgery. A forgery. You refer a lot to the book of Hebrews to explain this. Um, it's the theme. longest book in the New Testament that addresses the subject. Yes. Do we know who wrote the book of Hebrews? No, we do not. Who wrote the book of Hebrews? No, we do not. Who wrote the book of Hebrews? No, we do not. He mentions anonymous authors. Yes, there are anonymous authors. The Old Testament has a number of books that we don't know who wrote. We don't know who wrote Hebrews. Why is that an issue? I don't know. We must recognize that the Gospels are not what we wish they were. This is very true. It is true for Christian laity and it's true for scholars, but in different ways. I said to him, David, you do know that that Bible has been changed, right? You do know that it's been tampered with. It's not the same Bible that was revealed to Christ hundreds of years ago. And Unbeknownst to me, David was actually an up-and-coming apologist. He had studied the Bible, he had studied about the Bible, studied about the canon, reasons for believing the Bible, reasons for believing in Christ as Lord. So he was ready for the question, far more ready than I had anticipated. He responded and said, you know, they really haven't been changed. We can test how much they have been changed. There's a science called textual criticism, which allows us to estimate approximately how much of a manuscript is variant from its original. And I looked into that and I began to realize, well, hey, the Bible hasn't actually been changed all that much. The Bible hasn't actually been changed all that much. The Bible hasn't actually been changed all that much. Beliefs in Christianity that are affected by inaccuracies that have been found in the text of the Bible as it's, been tr as it's been passed along to us through the centuries. In other words, there are variations between the thousands of manuscripts that we have. And so what he asks is the real story. And have things been added through time to introduce theology to the New Testament that wasn't in the original documents? Well, it is true that we no longer have the original documents of the New Testament because, of course, they crumbled into dust many centuries ago. What we do have, fortunately, though, are thousands upon thousands of manuscripts as this New Testament was copied by scribes through the centuries and passed on to us today. Now, Bart Ehrman is right. There are some variances between these manuscripts. The good news is there's so many manuscripts that we can evaluate where these um, uh, errors have taken place and we can come to a conclusion about what the original documents said. And it is also true, as Bart Ehrman says, that there have been some changes made by certain scribes through the years. In fact, he points to one famous one in 1 John, where in the 16th century, for political reasons, some scribes added a little phrase to 1 John that is very specific in talking about the Trinity. And his suggestion is somehow that because this is not accurate, this was not in the original documents, therefore there must be a problem with our concept of the Trinity itself. Well, here's the problem with that. First of all, it's no secret that you know, this little section about the Trinity was added to 1 John. 
People knew throughout the centuries this had been added because of political pressure. That's why it's in virtually no modern translation of the Bible. What's more, the certain texts that say in the margins these next verses, verses uh, chapter 7, verse 53 of John to chapter 8, verse 11, are not found in the earliest manuscripts. 1 John 5, verse 7 and 8 also is referenced. The latter part of Mark, uh, the, the last chapter, verses 9 to 20, are, not, are also not found in the earliest manuscripts. So what's going on here? Have we added these? Are these been brought in much later date? And the answer is absolutely. And see, the beauty of the Bible is that we are honest with what we call manuscript variants. We are honest with it. We explain when the earliest manuscripts do not have verses and when they have been accreted later on. That's something the Quran doesn't do. And now I want to Thank you. 